All right, guys, so today we have Jamie, and excuse me, I'm out of town right now, so we're gonna make the best out of this. So, continuing with Jamie. Jamie came in and wanted to chop off his hair. I told him, look, Jamie, before we chop off your hair, how about we try something new, something different? Let's get a little crazy. So I went ahead and wet the hair, and I came back with the sea salt spray. And the reason, and I know you guys are probably thinking, why sea salt spray? That's usually for straight hair. And I know, typically, sea salt spray used for straight hair, but I want to just put you on to the game. Now, when it comes to this look that I want to give Jamie, pretty much the twisted look with the sponge, not the typical sponge, is a little bit different and cleaner, way cleaner. Uh, I want to go ahead and really give him a defined twisted look. All right, so we're going to grab our comb after that and we're going to start combing away, boys and girls. We're going to then come back with our trimmers and we're going for a high taper, guys. So make sure that the section is to the point where you have no C cup in this haircut. He does not want that. He pretty much left it up to me with this haircut he knows and has all the faith that this haircut is going to come out nice because remember he wanted to chop it all off thinking that you know his hair was going to grow back looking a little bit fuller towards the front and that's why you want to go ahead and give your clients options guys don't just think that because they're telling you hey i just want to chop it off that that's the way to go especially if they've been coming to you for quite a while give them options i told him look your hair's long enough we can reshape it that's why i twisted it first i'm going for the taper but i will be coming back to reshape it with some shears but let's go ahead and focus on this taper and on this point we have the number one guard all the way close i like to start my new sections with a next guard up all the way close it's almost like a safer way to fade into the next section without really being too committed and so after the number one guard i'm coming back with the half guard halfway open and i'm eliminating that line and and i'm i'm telling you guys you know for the ones that are struggling you know developing the fades you know don't be afraid to bring these guards higher than what you believe usually i remember my early days of fading every time i faded i always needed to go a little bit higher to have a more fluid blend so just push yourselves to go higher all right so we're on this next side we're creating this next ball section i stamp but the reason i stamp my sections my ball sections is it's because i don't zero gap my trimmer so that that stamping ball guideline doesn't really stick it doesn't stay there uh, and even if it did i just come back with trimmers and eliminate that okay so again remember Remember, I use the next guard up to create the section and then I come back with the lower guard. So in that, in that sense, you know, I had the half guard, created the section, came back with no guard, blade all the way open, midway, and then closed, okay? After that, we are going back to the number one, guys. The lucky number one, creating that section. And, you know, as I'm going about my system, right, I'm also remembering how bulky these taper, these high tapers with these twisted hairstyles look towards the ridge, right? and don't worry about that you know you don't need a guard for that high bulky end we're gonna come back with a nice little system and fix that smoothen that out i got you but before we go ahead and do that part we're gonna take care of this back taper so make sure you always tell your client to look down you don't want to put all the strain on your back on your neck and you know when it comes to this back taper i'm not gonna i'm not gonna drag it up too high i used to set these ball guidelines really high um and a good way of knowing how high you should go is debulking the highest point first you want to kind of clean out that canvas so you know how to gauge the taper okay so after I debulk as much as I can it doesn't have to be perfect I start this ball section it's not gonna be too high I used to think again that I had to go really high to make it seem blended but that's not the case you want to spread that next section so you do the ball guideline then the next section up most people will do the blade all the way open I like to use a guard all the way closed create the section usually it's like a, a half an inch to an inch and in this case it was about a half an inch and and then I open the blade midway, closed, and sometimes open it back up just to drag it up a little bit higher, okay? So after all of that, remember, we're using the comb. Don't forget about using the comb. And at this point, I'm using the fine tooth end of the comb because sometimes I just feel, it could be me, and let me know in the comment section that a brush makes all that area a little bit messy. Obviously, it depends on the bristles, but you don't wanna have too hard of a bristle brush, especially around the back area. It's real sensitive. You might irritate people. And the last thing you need for a fade is irritation because that irritation gets in the way of how it looks. You don't need all these problems. Go ahead and get you a comb. I like the pink comb because it stands out. There's a lot of things on my station and I like tools that I can spot out quickly. So this is where it's gonna start getting a little bit more interesting. Things are gonna start making sense. So after I combed 
that area behind the ear down. I went ahead and grabbed the clipper, closed it all the way, and I'm shaping it. So it's the same principle as shaping a fro. I'm just gonna go ahead and shape that area that has no twists to it, but it's still kind of, you know, kind of bulky. You see, I brought out the pick. Sometimes there's areas that maybe the comb can't really fluff up enough. Go ahead and grab a pick. I like the short picks. I don't really like the long ones unless it's a it's a big fro or a large curly beard. There's no reason to use those those long picks unless you have a lot of hair involved. So after you do all that, you shape that area up, then you come back with the trimmers and start lining that area up. It's gonna look nice and sharp and tighter without really committing to using a guard. Sometimes I come back and use a guard with the grain to, to lighten it up, but I'm telling you, freehanding that area works so much better. All right, Jamie, relax a little bit. We're gonna take care of this facial hair. So go ahead, put your head back. We're gonna take care of that chin area right there, okay? I don't like to put all the strain on my back. I already said that for the neck taper and the same goes for the facial hair. Go ahead and use and take advantage of that barber chair you have, guys. Go ahead and tilt back Jamie's head and clean that area up then, but not before then, okay? You don't wanna, you don't wanna be going under Jamie and then trying to do it all like that because after a few years of doing that to Jamie, your neck, your, your back, your, ne your, your shoulders, all of this, after being years in the game, Jamie's gonna break you down. You don't want Jamie to do that to you. You want to make the most out of your career. So back to this. In his case, I'm bringing that line up a little bit over the ridge of the lip. And then, you know, I'm saying these these low pro trimmers for the facial hair, they come in clutch, man. Cause I don't really, I'm not a big fan of uh, of heavy trimmers, especially when you gotta hold them upside down. And um, you know, the, the new low pro trimmers, and I'm no, you know, I'm not sponsored or anything by the company, but they hit, I, if Babliss is good at anything, is making some fire trimmers. Clippers are questionable sometimes, but the trimmers always on point, always on point. So remember guys, Jamie, you know, he was about to chop it down because he felt like that front area was a little bit lower than everything else. So what I suggested was let's style it up. Let's go ahead and fade you out. I'm gonna come back and shape it up, okay? Some people you could do the shaping up first and then fade, fade them out, but for me, I wanted to go ahead and do all the other work and then come back to this. So again, I'm staying away from the fringe area, pretty much the, this whole section right here. And I'm gonna do everything else, bring it down and even it out, okay? And after I chop it down, I, I go ahead and just, you know, do a little bit of extra twist work just to make sure that everything is as even as possible. And after that, we're gonna shape up that front hairline area. I'm gonna debulk a little bit by freehanding. I uh, went ahead and grabbed that hairspray, that blow dryer, and I start applying pressure. I start with the middle section first, okay? Now remember, that left section, it's a little bit lighter, okay? It's a little bit lighter. That's the most receding section in his hairline. So that means, you know, and I did ask, do you want some color enhancement? You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get to that in a second, but that hairspray, when you dry it, it kind of creates this, this imaginary hairline uh, because of the, the layer of hairspray. So you could actually use that to your advantage to know where that color enhancement's gonna go, even though I'm gonna pretty much clear it out, but you know, comb down as much hair as you can from the hair growth that is around that light area, bring it down. That's gonna help kind of make it look a little bit more natural and continue applying pressure on the vertical bar and everywhere else. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get to the point where all of this starts to make sense. Just stick to the plan, guys. Stick to the plan, we're gonna apply pressure. I mean, at this point, Jamie likes what he sees. Without the color enhancement, he still would have left happy. But you know, why not add a little extra to the service? Go the extra mile, your clients will appreciate it. And you don't have to sell it like, yo, do you want color? No, do you wanna enhance your hairline? And you have to make sure you got a little backbone when you say this. Make sure you have a little confidence when you say this. And you might not be the most confident person, but behind this barber chair, you need to be more confident. Outside the barber shop, you might be timid. In the barber shop, you are a master. Remember this.
right, so typically before I start these color enhancement services, I like to clear that section out first with some aftershave, all right? And the aftershave pretty much just takes off all the dirt, uh, in his case, the hairspray. You don't want any extra layers to be there by the time the enhancement color kicks in, all right? You want that to stain the skin. You don't want anything else on the skin, so keep that in mind, all right, guys? And, and oh, and also make sure that you dry that area up after you pass and clear it out with that aftershave because you don't want aftershave either uh, mixed in with that, with that color enhancement, okay? And so we're applying pressure. Do it a little bit at a time. Spray, spray, back up, look at it, and then if it needs a little bit more keep going all right and remember after doing all that and for me me personally i don't like just using the no drip i like to come back with any type of fiber i don't have a preference in his case i, I use the dark fiber the darkest i have uh, if it's anybody else depending on who it is because i actually had somebody come from baltimore from the dc area um it was three barbers and one of them you know white boy you know kind of like um not wouldn't say blonde hair but he had it was brown right and i have a mixture just for that tone so make sure you have different fibers for different tones black is not the only tone you need in this game okay get you some different tones because i'm telling you he fell in love with that service he was super happy to know that i had a tone for him but back to jamie after using the trimmers i come back with a razor lately i've been using that vincent blade uh, i don't use it on my clients uh depending on the service i just I, you know i just i get bored guys i want to try something new something different the vincent razor is pretty fun to use i must admit i like the weight on it i like that it has that magnetic you know take apart system to it but remember guys it's not the same blade that you can use on any other razor so it's very exclusive to the system just remember that part all right jamie we're getting close but we just gotta do a little bit more we, we're using a little bit of 245 shave gel we're applying it spreading it around with the with the comb because i don't always like using my fingers around that area of people's faces so after i make sure that it's nice and moisturized i come back with the razor i apply a little bit of tension with my hand and i even ask you to put your lip down just a little bit just so i could clear that area up a little bit easy after you know we go through this process and i also remember to to get this section right here you know right here i think this is such an easy section to miss right here on the edge of the lip so i don't know why i just thought of that but it does happen quite a while even for me when i'm clearing my face out so just wanted to point that out after that the chin hair comb it out freehand it a little bit apply a little pressure that way and just you know do a little do the details after that get you some oil sheen this oil sheen right here this freaking oil sheen i don't know why it, it it's made so cheaply when it comes to the mechanics of it great odor great scent but the freaking cap on that ocean right there is so cheap and it always falls off i hate it just wanted to express my frustrations and uh you know come back with some you know come back with some aftershave clean your client up a little bit especially if you're making content clean your client up a little bit before you show the finished product in jamie's case jamie you came to me looking a certain way feeling a certain way thinking that you had to chop it off but it's okay bro that's what i'm here for you and you trusted in me and because you trusted in me instead of looking bald-headed which I could have made that look good, don't get me wrong. We gave you a good, solid, twisted look. Oh.